What's up everyone, my name is Soren Iverson. I'm a product designer and today I'm going to show you how to create a responsive footer component in Framer. At the end of this video, you'll have a footer section like the one you see here, which has three sections of text and an email collection section, as well as privacy policy in terms of service at the bottom. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is go to the layout section. We are going to create two rows. So let's go ahead and drag this out here and then I have these two sections. Let's add a little bit of padding similar to this top area. So if I go to the layers panel and I go to desktop and I go to those rows, let's first rename this footer and then we're going to add 24 pixels of padding and then we are going to have a 12 pixel gap between these two elements. And then let's go ahead and take both of these and we are going to add a stack to both of them which basically creates columns. And then we're gonna remove this frame as well as this frame, but you can still see that there are these two blocks of content here. Let's go ahead and call this top, and then we'll call this bottom. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this entire section and rather than the rest of our site, which is white, we're gonna make this a nice black color. So I'm going to add a fill here. So I'm gonna take this, drag it down, and rather than having it be a pure black, I'm gonna have kind of a light tint. So let's say something like 1C, 1C, 1C. And then I am going to go to this top section and I'm going to go back to layout and I'm going to insert columns here. So I can do that by hitting Shift C on my keyboard and then clicking and dragging. And then let's set this to fill and then we will set this to fill as well. So the height and the width take up the full fill of my container. I'm gonna duplicate each of these once, and then I'll have these kind of stacked next to each other by the colors that they're automatically assigned. The next thing that I'm going to do is I am going to have this one be a little bit wider because I want it to have an email collection form, which is a bit longer. So let's go ahead and set this to three frames and then we'll have these all be a little bit smaller automatically. Now we're ready to start putting content in this section. So let's start here. I am going to add a new text layer. I'm going to have this say, stay in touch. Let's change the size of this to be 20 pixels and then we will change the weight to semi-bold and then let's bring in the letter spacing just a little bit so it feels a little bit tighter. And then I'm going to actually take this text style which I have above from a previous video. If you don't have that, it's just inter regular 16 pixels in size with the uh, letter spacing tracked in a little bit. So I'm gonna paste this down here and then let's have this say, subscribe for email updates. And then I am going to take both of these and I am going to add a stack. And then I'm actually going to remove this frame. So let's do that like so. And then I actually needed to reset the width here. So I'll set this to fill and we'll have this be three frames. And then I am going to have these things stack vertically instead of horizontally, and I will have this fill the content, that way it doesn't cut off. And then let's take both of these and we're gonna set the width to fill. And then let's go ahead and change the color. So we'll have this be an off white, and then we will have this be a pure white. So set it like that. And I'm gonna move this on top like so. Next I'll hit insert and then I'll type email and there's this MailChimp section here. So if I drag that in, you can see that that inserts a form to enter your email as well as a button. We want this button to match this style, which is this blue color. So I will copy that. And then I'm going to go to this button thing right here and I will change that fill like so. Now that I've got the button set up, I'm gonna take this fill and I'm gonna make it a little bit darker like so. And then I'm also going to change this to be white. And then let's change this from 30% opacity to something more like 60. And then just add a little bit more contrast. I'm gonna take this fill and make it even a little bit darker like so. And then you can see these things aren't aligned properly. So I am going to have these be left aligned like this. And then I have the basic content for the email collection section. Next, I'm going to take these frames and I'm actually gonna convert them into stacks uh, just because those will size up or size down more in the way that I want them to. So let's turn this into a stack and then let's remove this frame. And then I'm actually gonna delete both of these and then I will take this and I will duplicate it two times. 
You can't see it, but they're showing up here. Next, I'm going to paste in that text content that I had over here. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this text two times and I'm going to have it stack vertically instead of horizontally. I'm gonna change this to be a headline. So let's have this say company and we'll change the weight to semi bold and then we'll change the color to be white. And then here we'll say, since this is a framer website, we'll have it say framer templates. And then we'll have another section that says framer course. And then we'll have another section that says careers. And then we'll have one more section and we'll call it who we are. Okay, now that I've got that and it's looking good, I'm gonna copy and paste this headline and this section into here. Again, we need to set these to stack vertically. I'll also go ahead and change that over here so I don't have to do that again. Let's change this to get help. And then we will add a section that says contact us. And then we'll have one more section that says FAQ. And then in this last section, we'll use that as a social media container. So we'll have this say social. Let's say this company that we're making up has a TikTok account, a Twitter account, and then let's also say that they have LinkedIn. I could use icons here if I wanted to, but for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna go ahead and stick with text. All right, so now I have these four sections, but you can see that they're not aligned with each other. This one's a little bit down from the top of its container. This one's almost at the top, but they're all they're all centered, right? So I'm going to take all of these and I'm going to change the distribute to start. And then you can see that the content automatically aligns with the top, like so. I am actually going to have this be even a little bit larger, just so it stands out a bit more. Let's change this to 24. And then I'm gonna take all of these and I'm gonna change the padding to be 12 pixels. So there's just a little bit of spacing here from the side. In this footer, I've got a footer section, I've got the top section, and then there's a set of columns and then there's four rows, right? So let's go ahead and name these. We'll call this newsletter and then we'll call this company and then we'll name this get help. And then one last one we'll call social. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to columns and I will select that and then I will drag that into here and I will set this width to fill and then I will set this to fill as well for now. We're gonna change that in a little bit. I'm gonna take my logo, which is pretty plain, but we'll keep it as is for now. I'm gonna copy that and then let's bring that down into this left frame, so like that. And then again, we're gonna add a stack here and then we're gonna remove this frame and then you can see it lives centered like that. Let's change the color so that it's visible. And then I'm going to also add links for my terms of service. And one other one, which is my privacy policy. And then these are a little big. So let's go down to this text size and we will reduce this to 12 pixels. And then we're gonna change the width here to fit content. And then we are going to change the gap to be 16 pixels. And then we will have this, rather than being distributed center, it'll start at the beginning. And then rather than this height taking up this full width, I'm going to set this to fit content. So it's a lot shorter. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little like copyright statement on the right here. So I'm going to copy this text layer, this terms of service one. I will paste that into here. I'm going to change this frame into a stack and then let's remove this frame. And then I am going to take these columns and I am going to change the height to fit content. And then I'm going to change the overarching column section to also fit content. I'm realizing we don't actually need two sets of columns here. So let's remove this like so. And then we're gonna take this bottom section and we're gonna set it to fit content. And then you can see this gets a lot shorter, but for some reason, this is a lot larger. So let's change this to fit content as well. And then we're gonna change the parent container to also fit content. Uh, it's a little short right now. So I'm gonna change the gap between these sections to be let's say 40 pixels. And then you've got a little bit more space here. And then let's also change the padding on the top and bottom. So we'll have that be 40 and we'll have it be 40 on the bottom as well. The last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have this actually fill to the end like that, and then I'm going to reduce the intensity of that color so it's a little bit less visible. And then I'm gonna say, copyright my framer site, all rights reserved. 
and then let's add a year here. So we'll say copyright uh, 2023. And that is the basic footer for desktop. So one other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this footer, I'm gonna drag it to the very bottom of my screen, and then I'm gonna set this to align with the bottom. And that way, if I zoom out, when I take this whole site, if I bring it up or down, you can see it fits to the bottom, similar to how Figma treats that. On tablet, you can see things start to get a little bit crammed. So what I'm going to do is I am going to duplicate this column section. I'm gonna remove the three sets of links from the top columns and then from the bottom one, I'm going to remove that. And then I am going to take both of these and then I am going to change the settings of this top to stack vertically rather than horizontally. And then if I take all this, move it up a little bit, you can see the footer is kind of big, but it does work. So now I have these three sections that stack on top of each other just fine, but you can see there's a little bit too much spacing in certain areas. So what I'm gonna do with this section is I'm going to change this columns piece to fit content. And then I will also set this to fit content. And then you can see there's a little bit less spacing there. And then we've already got that kind of happening with these. One other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the gap to be 24 pixels, not 40. And so now we've got a little bit less spacing. Let's also change the top and bottom padding to 32 pixels. And then the last thing I'll do is I'll go up here and I'll align this with the bottom. So now I've got a desktop footer and then I've got a tablet footer. And then the last thing I need to do is create this mobile footer. So this is really broken right now because the fonts are too big and it doesn't have enough space to actually fit all the content. So I have a lot of layers open right now. So I'm going to go ahead and collapse this desktop and tablet section. And now I've got the phone and I've got this footer area and then I've got the top and I've got the bottom, right? So first of all, let's fix the bottom. We're gonna have these stack vertically rather than horizontally. We're gonna have these be left aligned. And then I'm going to go into this top column section. And then I'm also going to have the terms of service and privacy policy be in a stack. And then I am going to have these sections also vertically stack. And then you can see, I can't see this copyright section. So what I need to do is I need to drag this all up. I've got some weird alignment stuff happening here. So again, I'll select this bottom section. I will go to columns and then I will have this start rather than end. So it left aligns. And I'll take all of this content and I'll have it left aligned as well. Let's change this to have a 16 pixel gap. That way it matches the terms of service spacing from this header. So if I hold down option, you can see the 16 pixels from that title and 16 pixels from that disclaimer, legal disclaimer. So now I need to fix these other sections in the top. So let's collapse this bottom section. And then I've got this top area. It looks like that's fitting the content correctly. The rows, however, are not. So let's set that to fit content. And then I'm going to select all four of these and let's change those to fit content as well. And then you can see my footer gets a lot bigger. That's not a problem. We just need to kind of make sure everything aligns properly. So I'm gonna go into all four of these again. And then I'm gonna change the padding to be zero. And then I am going to take this section and I'm gonna change the width to fit content. I'm gonna take both these text layers and set those to fit content as well. And then let's take this entire section, change that to fill, and then we'll change this to fill as well. And so now I've got all the content properly fitting here, but the spacing is super weird. So I'm gonna to go to rows and I'm gonna change the gap here to be 24 pixels. Let's actually change this a little bit more to 32. That way I've got good spacing between each section. So there's 32 pixels spacing here, 32 here, 32 here, and it looks like 40 here. So I'm going to select this, change it to 32 for sake of simplicity and also consistency. And then I'm also gonna change the top and bottom spacing to 32 pixels. And then this is looking kind of too close to that on mobile. So I'm just gonna drag this down and then I'm gonna take this whole footer section on mobile and I'm going to align it to the bottom. And then I have now a footer for desktop, tablet, and mobile. And now if I hit publish, I'm going to click on the update button. And then if I hit play, I will open the preview of my live site. You don't see it right now, but if we scroll down, there's my footer. If we stretch it out, everything is responsive. If we bring it down, you can see it responds appropriately like we said it. And then once I get down to mobile, then you've got this mobile footer as well.
So it's not the most visually remarkable design, but it's great because you can change the links out to whatever you need them to be. And then you can add terms of service, privacy policy, legal disclaimers, and you can collect emails if you're doing marketing. Let's try one other thing. I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna duplicate these links and you'll notice that it breaks everything. So it looks like the footer is fitting content. The top section is fitting content. The columns, however, are not. So let's change that to fit content. That still doesn't fix everything. So let's go to company, change that. And then it looks like when I do that, I'm able to add a bunch of links here if I want, but we don't want to do that for the sake of this video. It's just something to keep in mind if you're adding or removing links when you try to design this on your own. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you now have a better understanding of how to use Framer to create a responsive footer component in your next website project. The best part is you'll be able to push a website live to production without touching a line of code. If you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Soren, and I'll see you in the next video.